Hey everybody, welcome back to another episode of Exacto Mundo with me, Eddie Del Seppi. Thank you so much for being part of this episode. Quick reminder, before we get into the episode, give this show a rating and review on Apple Podcasts slash iTunes. It helps the show grow. You never know how these uh, the algorithm works. You, you leave a comment, it may uh, catapult us in a whole different level, you know. Uh, also, this episode and this podcast is in full video on YouTube. Subscribe, hit the notification bell, get notified when an episode comes out every single week. This show is accompanied by my good friend, his words, not mine, the, the fuel of this podcast, the Keto King of Calabasas, Jeffrey Plitt. Hello. Jeff, where can they find you? Find me on TikTok at What You Need to Know, on Instagram at Jeff underscore Plitt, and on Twitter at Jeffrey Plitt, and I spell Jeff with a G. You can find me at Eddie Del Seppi across all platforms as well as this podcast. You can also see us live at Totally Comedy Show every single Wednesday in West Hollywood at Bar Lubitsch, one of the hottest shows in Los Angeles. Dare I say the hottest show in Los Angeles? Oh, yeah. On a Wednesday in West Hollywood, specifically that block. But uh, <laughs> we uh, we have some of the best comedians in the country. Me and Jeff perform there every single week. If you're in Southern California, if you're in the L.A. County region, or if you just want to make a trip, come on down. Check it out. Yeah, we just had Eliza Schlesinger. Yeah. Um, we've had a bunch of great comics. James Domian, the Todd Glass. We've had some of the biggest names in comedy history. Yeah. Uh, and uh, you can check us out every single Wednesday. Um, this is episode number 25. This show is legally allowed to rent a car in America. Mm-hmm. Um, Jeff, I know, I, you know, I've obviously have, you know, I've talked to you uh, throughout the week, but on this podcast, we've taken a week off. We're mm-hmm. doing a double today, which is so my hair won't change, but the outfit will. <laughs> um, but I have not, have I talked to you about the Vegas trip in depth? Uh, not necessarily. Not necessarily. Okay, okay, so you went to Vegas. I went to Vegas for a friend's. Um, uh, they renewed their vows. Wow. Uh, <laughs> Holy matrimony, Batman. Wouldn't this be great if we just kept doing what we're doing, but also forced our friends to watch? But uh, no, no, they're good people. I love them. They'll never watch this podcast because friends don't support content. Ah. Um, but uh, I did go to Vegas. Now, let me, let me before I get into this Vegas sort of like talk, do you like Vegas? You know, I'm conflicted because I really don't like gambling, and I find myself bored sometimes when I'm there with friends that want to do the things that I'm not interested in, like heavy drinking and gambling. Mm -hmm. But if I have a little flexibility, I can find myself a good time if I go to see shows or get to walk around the places that I like, focus on food and and shows, or go off strip. Uh, Hotels can be fun. There's lots of things to do in the hotel besides gambling. He doesn't like to gamble. He likes a sure bet. Podcasting and stand-up comedy. That's uh, right. That's <laughs> sure right. bet. Uh, those go, always go through. Please. I gamble on myself only. Yes. You gamble on my career, my time. Yes. But, um, you know, the older you get, the more you realize, wait a second. I've only been to Vegas twice. It's my second time. And the first time I went, I was on the cheap. I stayed at a, uh, someone's house that I knew there. I didn't go. Uh, I only was only there for a day because I didn't. I've never seen Vegas. My friend said, "Hey, we're gonna go to Vegas. You wanna come? I just gotta go do something." I'm like, yeah, sure. And I did on the cheap, and I remember how hot it was. But now that we're older and we have some money, if you do it right, and you spend the right money, right. It can be great. I think the sweet spot is to pick a um, ho- a casino or a hotel that's pretty new, uh, pretty nice. Yes. And, and um, one of these ones that's discounted because they think you're going to spend a lot of money on gambling. Yes. What I learned recently, me and the lady, is that you don't go to Vegas. You don't want to – the hotel as a whole is what you're – you you go for in terms of is what you've got to focus on. It's a big part of your experience. Is the hotel a you're huge, staying in the hotel? So the whole town runs on hospitality, on being really good and hospital towards its visitors. So you make sure you get a hotel. It's got a great room. The casino is is there, but it's not it's not it's not full of it's not sleazy. It's clean, clean, good yeah. HEPA filters, good air circulation. It's got a cafe. It's got this. It's got that. It's got a good restaurant downstairs. All these things help contribute to your Vegas experience. Is that what you did? That's not what I did. Ah. I decided to go to a hotel that had a Chick-fil-A downstairs. Now, oh, God. Say, what you, say what you will about our fine friends at Chick-fil-A. You know, they're God-fearing people. They make great chicken. Um, do I want to have one in my basement? While you're on vacation? No. No. Although the chicken bites are really good for a keto man like yourself. I do like um, them. But... There was also a Starbucks there, and it was. I stayed at the Golden Nugget, and you know, God bless the people that go to the Golden Nugget. Are you my people? God, no. Are you God's people? Probably. Was there a nu- nugget of gold? <laughs> there was no nugget of gold. There's a lot of 
There was a lot of gold teeth, but not a lot of <laughs> <laughs> nuggets of gold. I, th- I think the problem often is when you go to a hotel and you look around and every person there is uh, middle-aged, white, and obese. It's yes. like, I don't understand where The golden I am. nugget is if a Walmart said, hey, let's get fancy tonight. <laughs> That's what the Golden Nugget Hotel is like. <laughs> yeah. The Golden Nugget Hotel is like if 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 uh, if the employees of a Walmart said they had to go to like uh, the Golden Globes, like oh we 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 better spruce things up around here. Yes. Yeah. Let's take a shower. <laughs> <laughs> it was not. And God bless my friends who like staying at the Golden Nugget. They're good people. I love them very dearly. I think they're and bad I think, people. I I think they enjoy. My friends enjoy. The kind of like it's kind of fun. It's kind of it's kind of people watchy. Kind of like oh, this is kind of there's a little bit of grime here, but that's fine. But it's also cost. But it wasn't even money. We found places that like we ate at a Nobu at the Virgin Hotel, and and we walked around the Virgin Hotel. We're like, oh, this is really nice. We should stay here. This is really really nice. There's like people like us hanging out. There's yeah. a nice cafe. There's there's even a dog relief center for the hotel members. There's like this and there's, it it felt clean. It felt nice. This is the Richard Branson Hotel. Yes. Yeah. Uh, and then we went back to the Golden Nugget, and we walked through the casino part of it. And we're like, let's walk through. Let's walk through the slot machines. Oof. That's the worst. The worst is the slot machines. Like, I can handle the blackjack table, maybe a little gin rummy or something, but the, the slot machines are so depressing. Now, listen, slot machines in a good hotel are fine. They can be fun. They can be. Slot machines in a bad hotel or okay hotel, they get sad. I walked in. After going from the Virgin Hotel at Nobu, we spent a lot of money. It was we, we went all out. We said, we're not going to spend money on the room. We're going to spend money on a meal. And it was expensive, but it was worth it. And then we like stayed around. I was like, this is, oh, I wish we stayed here. Can we stay here tonight? Should we? <laughs> no, it's crazy. What was the price of the The hotel, hotel? I think it was like three fifty a night. And we're like, ah, no, no, no. We'll just go back to the Gold Nugget. We went back to the Gold Nugget. And then I was like, let's walk through the uh, where the slot machines are. And I saw a woman at the Gold Nugget Hotel. Should I say gold nugget over and over again? Are we going to get... S- no, nah, mm, no one listens. It doesn't matter now. Uh, I, <laughs> I was at this hotel, and I saw a woman in Vegas at a hotel, at a slot machine, baby on her lap, gambling, cigarette in the mouth, next to the baby. Oh, my God. That's too much. It was everything wrong. Everything wrong. Everything wrong. Oh, God. It was the slot machine. Did you have not- a cocktail? No, no, nothing to drink. She's right. got, yeah, I mean, she's got a kid though. Yeah. So, <laughs> oh my god. So she's just pressing the button, cigarette, just a burner, just dangling from her mouth. Kid on the lap, just just bouncing the kid, you know. And I'm just like staring, like wow. Plus, twenty years from now, that kid will be in, in the exact same chair, doing yeah. the exact same thing. They just switch. Yeah, <laughs> it's just holding her mom, just like like. Yeah, yeah, that's funny. yeah. It's yeah. funny, like you walk through these hotels and you see the slot machines. You see the you ever see like. You ever see like the the person like ninety years old, yeah, like at the slot machine, and they got their player card in, and it's got like the little telephone cord hanging yeah. from their pocket, and they're just doing this. It almost looks like I can't. It almost looks like an IV drip. It almost I can't tell who's yeah. keeping who alive. Are you keeping yeah. the machine alive or the machine keeping you alive? It feels very much like a ventilator situation. But, but the baby on the lap while the mom is smoking. I can't believe that. I just want to go up to her and be like, "Hey, ma'am, you can't do that to your child." And she'd be like, "This ain't my kid." <laughs> <laughs> Some kid, some lady asked me to hold it. I'm like, okay, never mind. Wow. Uh, so it was sad. I mean, so yeah. Me and the lady, we learned we, and then we went to like the Strip, the old Vegas Strip. Now, here's something you don't do: do not go to the old Vegas Strip at midnight on a 11:30 on a Saturday. No, no. How do I explain what it was like? So I think like, maybe it could be okay daytime. No, I walked out, and. Remember the scene in Batman Returns, the Penguin one mm-hmm. with Danny DeVito? Yeah. And remember when they, they stormed Gotham and all of the Penguin's henchmen were like running around? Yeah, like, yeah, yeah. Know, like a clown on a unicycle with yes. a flame. Yeah, yeah. You know? Yes. <laughs> that's, that's I know like. that scene. Yes. That's what it felt like. Just like oh some guy God. with swords out of his mouth. Like, yeah. You know? uh. <laughs> just walking around. Just like just havoc, you know? And huh. that's what it was. It was just havoc. I, I, we were walking around some, 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 there was some lady just giggling. She's like, she's obviously an unhoused lady, a homeless lady. She's walking around. Some cop is chasing her, like, get, get back here. And all through, people were just drinking. You know what it felt like? It felt like that strip was like where local scumbag bros go to hook up with moms from Missouri that are on vacation. Ah. They're like, yeah, let's go to the strip, man. Let's pick up some MILFs. Like, yeah. Okay. okay. And it was just crazy. And what they had was, we walked out and I was like, 
and jarring. I was like, what is happening? They have this sort of like uh, screen ceiling that's, that's, uh, that's curved over the whole strip. And it's meant to look like daylight. So it looked like I was in during the day. Really? Yeah. So I walked out. I was like, what? And I looked around and it, was, it, it, it they had clouds and sunlight. Oh, God. And it was supposed to look like you're drinking during the day. It was so illuminated that it felt like it. And I'm sure that makes people spend more money. Or drink more. Yeah. And, yeah. Or lose concept of time. Right. That's, yeah. Because a clock as big as his worst nightmare. Right. right? Yeah, you don't want a clock. No clock. No clock. Yeah. You can fucking you can ash your cigarettes on a baby's head, but if you if you're next to a clock, get that clock out of here. Yeah, there's also I think there's subtle things about um, aromas they put in the air, and even the arrangement, Oxygen, all that stuff. Yeah, yeah, and even the arrangement of furniture so that you don't exactly know what's the way out uh, unless you like really look for it. Yeah, yeah. yeah. They, everything's strategically done. It's almost like Truman Show esque, where you're about to walk out and some guy's holding. Uh, two movers are holding a, a pane of glass. Like, can't walk here. Yeah. Ah, okay. Yeah. <laughs> Just like trying to like divert you away. Yeah. But it was very odd because I was like, is it, what, what? It felt like it was like the afternoon. And then a light show happened where it's like a thunderbolt and like and music blaring. People are going, and people are like, yeah. I was like, get me the fuck out of there. Wow. It was just so. Does not sound it was fun. havoc. But you go to the regular strip, you can choose your reality. You can be like, oh, well, I'm going to go to Nobu, and I'm going to go maybe some like gambling here, maybe watch a show. It just felt a little more. So if you ever go to Vegas with a lady or whoever, or your buddies, uh, do not go to Old Vegas. I'll quickly tell you my favorite things to do in Vegas, even though, um, I don't know, I don't think any of these are that amazing, but the things that I have enjoyed when I have been there. I think the New York uh, casino is kind of cool, just because of the history of New York. The Paris Casinos kind of cool because Caesars? it feels like, Do you like Caesars. I did like the downstairs of Caesars because what they have is something where the ceiling. This is kind of like what you were talking about, where the ceiling looks like sky. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I kind of like that. That's kind of cool. Although it's all shopping, and I have no interest in shopping. But um, I also like the Paris has the best buffet. It's just like absolutely luxurious. So much ridiculous quality and quantity. It's the mo- the the most buffet I've ever seen. So sorry to pick back on that. My. Uh... My girlfriend went to, uh, we went to Caesar's Palace, went to the mall, the indoor mall, with a lot of the high-end designers from Rolex to like Prada to like mm-hmm. Gucci or whatever. And we walked, me and the girlfriend, we said, okay, we're in Vegas. We're at a high-end mall. Let's walk, let's go to Louis Vuitton. So we walked into Louis Vuitton. And what's, what I love about Vegas is that you get a nice combination of uh, high-end, highfalutin, high, uh, big, big, you know, uh, high-roller people that buy designer stuff. And you get just mom and pop from the middle of the country just sightseeing. Yeah. And they all come together, and they go to the same stores for the for different reasons. Uh. Someone, The rich people go to the store to buy something. The people that are a little more middle class, they go to just laugh at the prices. Yeah. So we're in Louis Vuitton, and we're just kind of looking at stuff. And then you'll see someone with like a small dog. You'll see that. You know the type of customers. You'll see that guy. You know those uh, Middle Eastern guy with glasses and a full track suit mm. just – just not paying attention to his own kid who's on an iPad. Like, hey, get, get it, get it. Yeah. You know, just to tell his wife, get it, get, get three. Uh-huh. You know, go, go. <laughs> <laughs> it's my, sorry, it's my whore, you know. <laughs> and then we were walking, and then some white middle a- middle-aged couple from probably Ohio walked in and like, honey, I'm here. I'm in Louis Futon. <laughs> and I was like, get me out. <laughs> That's funny. Get me yeah, out of here. Funny. But. Caesar Palace is nice. The other things I like are, um, I, I, this is a kind of a low end casino, circus circus. It is mostly lame. However, at the near the top, there is a full. Uh, I think it's a, basically a one ring circus where every twenty minutes there's like uh, trapeze or like mm. you know ba- juggling or something. It's just kind of something interesting there. Also, some of the. Um, Casinos actually have a stage, and there'll be a decent stand-up show. And I'm not even talking about the big shows that you buy tickets for. I'm talking about just, like, walk up for free and listen while they're trying to get drinks being served at the bar. And there's a stand-up comedian over here, or there's a musician over there. So I kind of like that, because sometimes you'll hear a good cover of something you like, and that's enjoyable for 10 minutes. Um, And finally, the Bellagio Fountain. That's uh, If you've never seen it, it's worth seeing. It's pretty amazing. The food there is great. Mm -hmm. The food there is great. I mean, we ate... At Nobu, Nobu, which was incredible, we had this, this this Israeli food, which was really good. This this uh, this uh, Michelin star chef uh, had this sort of new restaurant that we went to, and it was really good for lunch. Uh, all good stuff, mm-hmm. but Old Vegas is sad. I think one day, if you 
get to the point in your career where you perform there on a semi-regular basis, you'll have a newfound, uh, because if you're on the inside track and you're kind of a VIP and mm-hmm. people put you up in a really nice uh, place yeah. and you got uh, cool people to hang out with the whole time and it's really your oyster, I'm sure it's an amazing experience. Mm. But as a random consumer and not liking to gamble, I rarely have a good time. Here's there. another character in Las Vegas that I'm fascinated by is the Elvis impersonator. Now, this wedding <laughs> I went to had an Elvis impersonator. They uh, ordained the wedding. And it was very cool and very awesome because the Elvis impersonator mailed it in but also d- killed it. You know what I'm talking about? Uh, Do you get maybe. what I'm saying? Yeah. He, he was just very rehearsed. He's like, you know, just... Every beat he knew the word. He must have done this a thousand times, but uh, he, ev- but he delivered it so precise, and he was just so Elvis. Yeah. Now Elvis and Michael Jackson impersonation is like an art uh, in its own. Oh, and there's a subculture where like there's conventions and uh, there's Elvis yes. conventions in Las Vegas where people from Elvis is from all across the world. You see like a Japanese Elvis. You see like oh, a Middle yeah, Eastern yeah, Elvis. Yeah, you yeah. see like you know like a like a black Elvis. You know? <laughs> uh, but. And different stages of Elvis. You get like the early like honky tonk Elvis, and you get like the fat died on a toilet Elvis. Right. right. Just the different spectrums of Elvis. Yeah. But what I forgot about is those guys live normal lives outside of being an Elvis impersonator. Right. And sometimes you see them just living a life, but they're Elvis. You in know costume, saying? really? No, no, not in costume. So these guys all they have. Jet black dyed hair. Yeah, like, they do have th- to have the hair. Like very, like I'm talking like you know, uh, just for men, jet black, and, and like the lamb chops, right? Like that right. jet black, right? Face old. Yeah. And then I look, I was like, oh my god, that's an Elvis impersonator. And we're, but he's at a coffee shop and he's wearing, <laughs> he's just wearing a t-shirt and some cargo shorts and some Nikes. Hey man, they gotta take a break sometimes. It's just like oh. This is your life? Uh, I can understand if it was the wig and this a prosthetic, but you just live every day like that? Oh, like it can't take the Elvis off completely. No. Yeah, that's tough. No, he has to like run. Like you're Elvis maybe 5% of the day. The rest of the time you're just some dude yeah. with Elvis lamb chops. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's the worst. Isn't that odd? It is odd. That was so odd. The juxtaposition between what he was dressed like and what he face and head looked like. I was like, what are you doing here? Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, I don't think I could ever be that dedicated to a costume. I had to alter my appearance totally like that. No, I could not do a costume-based performance thing. What happens when you get old? Yeah. Because Elvis because Elvis dying at, what, 50? Means Elvis impersonators can only be 50. Right. It'd be pretty Because if the Elvis died at 90, you could be an 80-year-old Elvis impersonator. I'd be like, hey, remember when he was 80? Right. Well, hey, Siri, when did Elvis die? Okay. <laughs> <Sure>. Chicks. <laughs> hey Siri. Hey Siri. When did Elvis die? Elvis Presley died at 63 West Highway 77 at age 42 in Memphis. Uh, dude, we're as old as Elvis when he died. Oh. 42? Oh yeah, yeah. Wow. I would have guessed like 50. Mm-mm. He died on a toilet. He also was very fat, so it makes you seem older. He must have been on crazy drugs yeah blow you name it pills mm-hmm. he died on a toilet right didn't yes he? he did didn't he have a heart attack on the toilet something like that do you know elvis has like you know it's funny like i have a friend that was obsessed with elvis uh and he would oftentimes in the car he would just spout like all these facts about elvis and how he never he all his like people in his inner circle he never paid them he just gave them whatever they wanted when they wanted it that's interesting so the reason being is because when you leave, you leave with, I, I can't remember what it was. Like he wanted, the, I think what it was is that it's a subtle, um, not subtle, it's a very manipulative thing where like you need me to get anything. Oh yeah, that's that's pretty diabolical. You can't, you can't use my money to sort of reinvest in wealth or whatever, or, you know, or yeah. you have to, you need me for everything. It's just like, Hey boss, uh, I think I need a new car. You go at it, you know. Yeah. Or like, hey, I need this. I need diapers for my kid. All right, just use my card. Like, so you he would only pay his people when they needed something. Hey boss, I'd like an uh, ind- independent form of wealth of my own. Uh, it's like yeah. I can do it to you in like you know, in yeah, various you- uh, gift cards. Yes. Um. So that's really sinister. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Black people don't like Elvis, do they? I don't know. 
because he kind of stole rock and roll. I am the world's leading hip hop expert, Eddie, but I really don't. I can't speak for all black. People. I was talking to my, my friends, like you guys like Elvis, like nah. And it's funny when I went to the the. Uh, oh yes, he he is known for maybe stealing uh, like the Chuck songs Berry's and the yeah, yeah, and, yeah and the dance moves. Yes, that's yeah. right. Yeah. Interesting guy. I mean, so did Eminem. You know, I mean, who who cares? Right, right, right. Um, but young Elvis was a good looking guy. Mm -hmm. You know, so good looking that he had to marry his cousin or niece. Mm -hmm. or what did he do? I would have banged him. Really? Oh yeah. Oh wow. No. Um, did he hook up with his niece? Yeah, I, 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 don't, I think he married a thirteen year old girl. I know he got with a uh, underage girl. Yeah. It's yeah. Huh. Not acceptable, but it was a different time. At ah, least. yeah. No, no. It's all the greats do it. <laughs> Woody oh, Allen, God. Elvis. Oh God. Um, we get, we should get to the news stories. Mm -hmm. What time are we at? What? We're twenty minutes. Out. Oh yeah, we got to get into the news story. We do here on the Exacto Mundo podcast is we talk about news stories, stuff that's going on, on the front page and the back page. Jeff, what do you got for us this week? Well, it's Trump indictment week. We're going to start with a couple of specific stories around that. Bef so before we get into it, I want to preface this with this: we're recording this on a Monday. He has flown in from from Florida. Mm -hmm. and landed in New York State, mm -hmm. New York City. He's put himself up in, in his hotel. Tomorrow's the day. Yeah. Like, this is like... It's a big day. You know, it's funny. You talked about to me about this, like, last week, and you're like, he's going to get arrested. He's going to... There will be. There might be a mugshot, yada, yada, yada. And when it didn't happen last Tuesday, a piece of me was like, he's going to do it again. He's going to get away with it again. He's going to go off scot-free. But now it's happening. Yeah. Will there be a mugshot? It looks like there won't be. In today's reporting, uh, they said that he'll be charged with 34 counts, uh, 34 charges, uh, but will not have handcuffs or the mugshot. Here's the thing. What they really need are like finger... You need to photograph someone if you're worried that this is a person who disappears all the time and no one knows exactly what they look like. They're changing their appearance all the time. Right, Trump is the most recognizable person on earth. Right. You need a, you need a mugshot if they go on the run and you have a reference yes. point. Yeah, yeah. They'll get his fingerprints, I guess. You also, you don't need the handcuffs when they're already constantly surrounded by secret service and stuff. He's not a security risk in that regard. He's not going to run. Right, yeah. right. So, so there's really, no mugshot. No, probably not. Probably not. That's what I read. Yeah, I guess I guess he can came, came to a deal like I'll come quietly if there's no mugshot. I'm glad there's no mugshot because that actually he would use as a weapon back against right. you know He'd he would like, oh, like, raise money off it and turn it into a martyr um, situation. Thing. Yeah, yeah. He, he would make T-shirts with it. Uh, all right, what do you got? What do you got? Well, one one angle on this is that Stormy Daniels might be able to take the credit for Trump getting indicted. Uh, she even said, and I thought this was cute. Stormy Daniels said, this pussy grabbed back. Mm. A couple other facts about the indictment. So in 2016, Donald made a hush money payment of $130,000 to adult film star Stormy Daniels. He's always denied the affair, but um, I don't think it was, uh, you know, I don't buy the denial. Seems like it really happened. Mm -hmm. uh, Michael Cohen was actually the one who paid her. Then he was reimbursed in installments by the Trump Organization. Now, debatable whether the Trump Organization is more of a... Um, Trump as a person, or tied to Trump as a brand. Did this all happen before he was election? elected? Well, this was 2016, so it was election year. Oh, okay. Um, in 2018, when he was already president, the story went public in the Wall Street Journal. That's when we found out about it, even though the payment was 2016, okay? And part of this whole narrative is, when it was in, why would he have paid her that year, 2016, if it was just a personal thing? It was clearly related to his election. What's a... Uh... Explain to the people listening to this podcast, explain to all 50 people wh <laughs> why this is illegal. So it's illegal um, for a couple of reasons. Um, the first one that jumps out to me is f campaign finance fraud. The general idea is we, we have federal um, r laws th that can carry jail time if you hide uh, the evidence of, of where you got money or what you spent it on related to your campaign, your election itself. Mm -hmm. So we require campaigns to be very well tracked with what they spend money on. Right. The other thing is there's a state law, I believe, about falsifying business records, which is really a misdemeanor, maximum of one year if you, you know, he, he said um, that, Either he said he didn't spend the money, but he did, or he spent the money but didn't market correctly, something like that. However, it gets magnified if the business record fraud was done in order to perpetuate a larger crime. Right, then, right, right. and only then, it becomes a felony with right. a max of four years. Uh, and that's the theory here that's being tested. That's just one thing he's done that he's, you know, 
being indicted for. Now, remember, Cohen actually went to jail. Here's the thing. It, he went to jail, right? Yeah. If some people say, well, what Trump did was harmless, why can't he spend money on these things? Well, and other people say, well, you know, courts looked at this and didn't think it was a big deal. Well, that's not exactly true. Cohen went to jail for his part in this. So courts already said that something went wrong there. Right, right, right. Cohen uh, later got out of jail and has cooperated and has been part of this prosecution. And so we're looking at this as a How larger crime. How long has he been crime. in jail? Two years? Something like that, yeah. Yeah, wow. Yeah. Oh, wow. Huh. Uh, Stormy uh, even, not directly herself, but a letter came out that was uh-huh. signed by Stormy, and she admits to signing it, in which she says that uh, she there was no affair. However, she later recanted and said that intimidation and coercive tactics were used to get her to sign the denial letter. So if you ever hear someone saying, hey, Stormy said it didn't happen, then they are deliberately ignoring the fact that she recanted that later, which always needs to be mentioned whenever someone right. says, she said, she said. It's like some old school mobby kind of stuff. Like they twist her arm, put a gun to her head, like you, you know, say you didn't do it. Yeah. Man. You know, it's funny. I heard stories of how like, uh, I think I heard it on a podcast how Stormy Daniels would still like, even after she claimed... Uh, her affair with the president at the time and she would still like you know strip be like like features yeah. a stripper and yeah. then people in the farmer would all have maga hats to sort of clown her and so, oh wow. jesus it's crazy how far we've come huh you know it's yeah. my first week as an american citizen and already indicting a president it feels good does this happen all the time yeah <laughs> yes ah. it, it's actually because of your citizenship you know as soon as i happened man i was like man this is the America I want to be a part of. <laughs> right when you learned how the Constitution works, mm-hmm. we needed a constitutional crisis. There you go. Man, what, what a time to be alive. You know, if you're a hardcore liberal, or anybody really who dislikes him, you're, this, is, this is your, like... This is my Super Bowl. This is your Christmas. Yes. This is your Kwanzaa. This is your fucking... The Jewish version. This, yeah. is, uh, this, <laughs> yes. this is your Hanukkah, I don't know what you're, Yeah, this is my Hanukkah, yeah. <laughs> this, is, this is your moment, man. Yes. Yeah. I, I just think it's just, I think it's just, you know, if I could be serious for a moment, may I? Uh, yes, I'll allow it. Okay, good. Um, it really is a sad day in America Yeah. when you think about it. When you really think about it, like we can all joke around like, oh, imagine Trump in jail. It'd be kind of funny, you know? But, uh, oh, look, at he, how American is this? He, he fucked a porn star and he paid her off and didn't and tried to hide the money and now he's going to, uh, like, getting arrested. It's what a what an American way to go down, you know. You know, my my view is it's sad. Uh, uh, to put this in full context, uh, there are countries where the tiniest, teeniest, tiniest crime of a previous president gets magnified by the the new regime, and they prosecute um, the the old uh, you know administration or the the old president um, purely punitively for political reasons, and that I'm not cool with. Um, the reason I don't think that's what's happening here is because this crime actually has to do with the election itself and with campaigning. And yep. when it's that closely tied with his purpose and his whole being, which is the, this political presidential stuff he's been working on all these years, any crime that is fundamentally part of his campaign or tipping elections, I think must be looked at. If he's got a parking ticket somewhere that he hasn't paid and there's supposedly prison time, I don't care. I don't want him prosecuted for those things. But I do want him prosecuted for something, especially the Georgia situation where I think he has the most right, liability. Right, right. When he said, find me 6,000 votes, and he really really believed, and he probably could have if they had said yes, um, uh, totally got us into a constitutional crisis. That, to me, is the big one. You know, it's funny, like, uh, a former president paying off an adult film star hush money and illegally hiding it uh, and breaking the law. You see this headline, and you think how this embarrasses, uh, embar- how this embarrasses Americans and as an America in general across the world, like there's certain leaders that are looking at this and being like, ah, oh, typical Americans mm-hmm. having fun with porn stars and spending money and hide, trying to hide it, trying to avoid taxes. And there's other countries that are looking at this like, yeah, he should have killed her. <laughs> <laughs> other leaders in other countries are like, he should have murdered her. This one's going to murder her. Yeah. See? Yeah. That's what you get. You killed her, and then nothing happens. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so, you know, I don't, don't the, I don't know if the whole country's, I don't know if the whole world's looking at America being like, this is embarrassing. There are some parts of being like, eh, you know, this would not happen if you just yes. murdered her. <laughs> I'm so glad that we don't live in a country uh, like that. That's the way Russia's sliding now, is um, yeah. the, the, the Putin can just murder random people that don't agree with him, and, uh, you know, have no, there's no independent. This is kind yeah. of... You know, you ever like take a step back 
and just like look at what's happening the, in this newscape that's happening right now and take a step back and be like, man, if, if I told somebody, if I went back in time and said back during the Obama administration and told someone this is what's going to happen in, in 10 years, <laughs> they'd be like, are you insane? What the hell are you talking about? No, 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 insane. no, no. We're going to elect a, a, a former uh, reality show yeah. television star who's a kind of a billionaire, but kind of not really. <laughs> you know, the guy we all laugh at? Yeah, he's going to be president. And then he's going to totally split the country. And then he's going to have fanatics that are going to try to storm the Capitol. And then he's going to pay off a porn star. And that's going to go rogue because he used he did it illegally. And then he's going to get indicted. And it's going to, you know, everybody's like, what? Yeah. It just sounds made up. It really does. Does it feel like we're in a simulation? And it feels like someone just went like this. <laughs> yeah, so, it feels so weird. crazy times. We're weird times. Um, give me a prediction. What do you think is going to be the next two weeks going to be like? Because you've been kind of spot on. What's going on? Mm. You, you follow this closely. Okay. Give well, me the next two weeks. Well, after his arraignment, um, he, you know, bail is always um, something that they do during arraignments, but I, I just don't see. Uh, the need for bail here. What they will do, though, is they. May, this is interesting. I think this is going to come out tomorrow, or the next day. I think they. There will be other. The judge will impose other restrictions, such as can't leave the country. Exactly. He might have to turn in his passport, which is kind of interesting. Um, which does make sense. He should not be leaving the country during this trial. Huh. Um, turning the passport. Um, also, he might have to agree to keep a record of all travel, which means if he if he leaves Mar-a-Lago for a second and goes to the drugstore, he'll have to have a record of it somewhere. Um, and one other thing, he may have a gag order placed on him. He has already, now, after the indictment, just in the last two or three days, he has been on Twitter saying, this what judge exactly is, is a gag order. You can't talk about it? The gag order creates extreme consequences for talking about X, Y, or Z, whatever the terms of the gag order are. Uh. And, I mean, you literally will go to jail immediately. You can just be arrested and thrown right into jail um, with no other process if you break the gag order that's placed during your arraignment. It is right. to prevent... Uh, there have been trials where someone just started telling lies to the press during the trial and wrecking any chance for a real trial to happen, and, and they have to completely start over from scratch and, and lose a whole chance for a real trial well, to happen. Well, well I mean, the pre uh, the former president's bread and butter is delaying trials. Yeah, not just delaying, which he's great at. Also, in denigrating the judge and attacking the jury and all sorts of things. In this case, they took special arrangements to make sure that the, all the details of the jury are extremely secretive, so he can't attack the jury. Um, and Will he go to trial this year? Um, now, that's debatable. He'll, he'll probably file pretrial motions, which mm -hmm. means uh, the trial slows down, or he'll try to get out right, of the trial. Right. Or, more, more accurately, bring the trial to some other location besides New York. He'll claim that the better place for it is... I don't know, some maybe Florida or something where this, this people is, uh, are people like him more. But the problem is, he lived in New York, and all the crimes happened in New York, so it's going to be New York. This is like, um, this is like, this is trial. This is the year of the trial. Yes, this is like OJ. Of fun trials. This is be year. bigger than OJ. So we got, we got, we got the po possible Trump trial, and I also want to talk about this. Uh, also, that Koberger guy. Oh yeah, the, yeah, the Idaho guy. His trial's coming up in June. That's gonna be oh, fun. Oh jeez, wow. That's gonna be fun. Also. Uh, we had was the Johnny Depp one last year? That was yeah. last year. Yeah, that was crazy. It's, it's been it's been tried. It's a lot of cool trials lately. We had the Gwyneth Paltrow trial. That, I want to talk about that. One. That one's a lot of fun. <laughs> That's that one kind of it, it happened quick. The memes were were flying. Uh, I don't believe that guy for one second. I think he's a complete and utter fame whore. And uh, I looked at the trial, the in and outs of the of the what the jury was uh, deliberating on. And how he claims his whole life was altered. He's never the same person. But he also went on, traveled the world several times after that. Yeah. And, and that, apparently there's a record of him just a few days later saying, I'm going to be famous. I got hit in the, I got hit by Gwyneth Paltrow or something. I mean, like I hit Gwyneth Paltrow or something like that. Yeah. Yeah. And the fact that Gwyneth Paltrow could have easily paid him off. He just wanted $300,000. Right. Like that rich. Right. Is like truly not. She could have easily given him half of that. And he probably would have said, okay, fine. I'll take that. Right. Instead, she decided to put herself in, in in front of the cameras, in front of the world, take only one dollar. One dollar. But he has to pay for her lawyer fees, which is still probably a lot. Which is I mean, fine. That's... But actually, I think the one dollar is the perfect choice for her. You can't go lower than that. I I think just traditionally, if you don't count, you can't counter sue without a claim of damage. So by claiming one dollar of damage plus the fees, she can show the world that she wasn't looking to um, soak him. She just 
didn't think this trial was right and wanted him to. Do you think that played a big role with the jury? Do you think the jury saw the one dollar? Like she's clearly doing yeah. this for just she. She knows she's right. That is definitely part of the you messaging like, to the jury. It must be difficult for a jury member to like see someone like Gwyneth Paltrow, who you just you who's so beloved and such a great actor. You're like, is she acting? It must be tough. Mm-hmm. The one fact that helped this guy is, I believe it it was proven true that after the the um impact that she she was kind of disoriented got up and 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 pretty soon left but she believed she was kind of being attacked celebrities are often under some sort of assault you know verbal or even physical assault by fans by haters who knows i think that was a reasonable thing for her is after the impact she didn't realize she had caused it she thought that someone bumped into her and she was kind of scared because celebrities sometimes get cornered in an alley by paparazzi and she just had to get out of there time buddy (laughs) yeah All the time, you walking down the streets of Los Angeles, people running up to me, hounded by mother factors, just hounding me. Exact <laughs> Mundoites, Della Disciples, Della Disciples, just rushing me. Yes, like ah, I'm like I gotta talk to you. I gotta. And you're like, okay, what what, what do you want to know? And they're like, what is it like to podcast with Wheezy? Oh my god! <laughs> <laughs> Sometimes people just run up to me. I might get a restaurant and some people just will just run up to me, just walk up to me and they're just like, give me their keys. They just give me their cars. <laughs> I'm like, guys, the gifts are getting too extravagant here. Is this near the entrance, Eddie? This is near the entrance. Right outside the entrance? Usually it's people just walking in. Sometimes they're so starstruck, they can't even look me in the eye. They just give me keys. Really? I'm just like, oh. Any money? Do they give you money? Yeah, sometimes they do, which is kind of nice. I think I figured this out, Eddie. I no. think they think that you're the valet. No, no, no. What they look at me, they think that's the guy that I've been watching on Instagram Reels. That's the guy. I listen. That's the guy I've been listening to uh, on his podcast. I'm gonna just give this guy a Volvo, oh. and I'm gonna give him some cash because he never carries cash. He's a oh. he's a big credit card uh, Venmo guy. This makes this yeah. checks out. This makes sense. It's really embarrassing. Really it happens all happens every time I I, I like. <laughs> Every, every time you're near a car, someone wants to give it to you. Every time I'm outside a restaurant, dressed in black, <laughs> fans run up to me, give me their car keys and some cash. <laughs> Ugh. This is a word to all the people out there. I'm flattered. I'm, I'm, I'm moved. I'm touched. I don't want your car. I'm already driving a BMW X1. I have a girlfriend. She's paying for most of it. But uh, And once you give it to him, you should not be asking for it back no, like you always and do. I say, I'm like, no, here. <laughs> Thank you, though. Thank you. And I do one of these. I always do one of these when I appreciate fans. I go like this. <laughs> That's how you know you got a real pretentious idiot when he just like when he goes like this. He gives the prey hand. Yeah. yeah. Um, That's funny. Happens all the time. Happens all. You'll get there too. Well, thanks, Dan. Man. <laughs> You'll get there too. You'll eventually <laughs> give your car to a Hispanic-looking man. Uh, what well, do you got next? Well, I don't oh, know if you want to. Do we get on. to the bottom of this one? Any more uh, stuff on this? Uh, there is one more thing okay, related cool. to the Trump thing, which was that the. Reaction from the Republican community has been pretty pretty funny. One that I noticed was that Lindsey Graham went on Fox News and he he looked like he was crying and he said um, Trump should smash windows and punch a cop on his way in to get booked. Now it turns out that what he was really attempting to do was sort of pun- poke fun at the fact that Alvin Bragg is is rumored to be uh, not tough on most crimes and suddenly tough on Trump's crimes. Where he, he, although I don't think that's really that accurate. Um, it's more about prosecutorial prosecutorial discretion um but lindsey graham you know basically encouraging violence in that moment very very strange take Mm -hmm. yeah anyway crazy week huh hopefully there won't be any domestic terrorist attacks on the courthouse luckily i think all of the january 6 stuff the one good thing is that even trump's craziest people are not gonna come to you know to new york to start a, a ruckus because and i've heard some of them say this they're like don't go it's entrapment and my thought is yeah yeah don't go yeah it is entrapment so don't go <laughs> right 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 yeah it's, i'm sure this they've been planning for this that's probably why it's been taking an extra week because they're like they have to really like Make sure everything's safe and done right. And there has been a lot of security preparation. A lot there. of security preparation. Probably more than anything they've ever had to do in history. I think so. Yeah. Interesting. Huh. What if this was Biden? What would happen if... Imagine if the table to this happened to Biden. You can't put that guy in the stand. He doesn't know what the hell's going on. <laughs> <laughs> you can't put Biden in. You can't indict Biden. He doesn't even know. He just played, played sen- he's senile. I think the question is this. Um, if Trump becomes president again, which... By the way, there's no law saying that you can't run for president from a jail cell no, or become elected and be the president from a jail cell. So, you know what? 
whether you could be president from a jail cell, you can release a hit rap album from a jail cell. That's you right. can be from jail, really. That's right. It really is kind of a cool deal. It really is. You're having, you're getting mealed, you're getting fed every day. Uh, plenty of time to read. Uh, lots of sex. Some of it you want. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I mean, if Trump going to jail is, it doesn't sound too bad. I not mean, not too bad at all. Not too bad at all. But he can run from jail. Yeah, he could win from jail now. Once he's president, the number one goal that he and the rest of Republicans will have is to put pardon. Biden in jail. Real? Oh, not pardon himself? Well, uh, you can't pardon your... Well, he could try, but actually even uh, most judges, uh, most law experts believe that you can't pardon yourself exactly. You could, you could win, step down, have your vice president pardon you and get out. But here's the thing is beyond that, well, I think... There, and actually, even regardless of whether he goes to jail or not, now that he's been indicted... The Republicans' top goal, and they say it all the time, is to indict Biden on something. Mm. The question is if they can find something big enough and deep Good enough. Good luck. I mean, what? Not like he's got a crack smoking son with a, with a, with a computer full of secrets. <laughs> Good luck. <laughs> he's not one of those guys. But even if they find, it, it looks like one of the likely things is that they're going to find that on Hunter's laptop, there's some email somewhere that says that uh, he um, gave improper influence to help Hunter make a buck or two in, in Burisma or one of these mm-hmm. countries where where Hunter was doing some dealings. It's like, okay, that's a crime, but is that central to his uh, entire presidency? Is that worth indicting a president See, over? all this, what we're talking about, all this political hoopla, what, this guy uh, paid off this person or... This guy's son's a crackhead who's selling secrets to the Ukraine, or <laughs> this is happening with Russia, this is happening with China, all this. You know what? This is why I became an American. So I can finally have my say and vote for Ralph Nader. Oh. <laughs> is he running again? That again? He's always running, isn't he? He always well, seems he's to. always trying to sneak in there with a little vote or two. Yes. Is he part of the Green Party? He always looks like he, he always looks like he's tired. <laughs> what is Bernie? Anyhow. All right, what do you got next? What do you got next? Let's get let's get off this political talk. Well, in sports news, NFL quarterback Jimmy Garoppolo oh. was offered free sex for life by a Las Vegas brothel after joining the Raiders. Ah, can't blame the ladies or guys, really. He's a now, hot man. That's right. Now, Garoppolo just signed a three-year, $67 million deal with the Raiders. Um, at the famous brothel, The Chicken Ranch, mm. uh, was interviewed by TMC. At t- and during the interview, they said, we're offering... Jimmy, free sex for life. In ah. fact, one of the ladies, Caitlin Bell of the Chicken Ranch Brothel, said, I almost fainted when I heard he signed with the Raiders. Ah, Jimmy G, cash in on that. It's memories that'll last a lifetime and possibly a sore or two. <laughs> yes. <laughs> a those, bump or sore. Those STDs will last even oh, longer. Oh, my. STDs really are the tchotchke of the penis. Yes. <laughs> 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 that thing will last and stick around for a long time. You'll always look down and be like, oh, remember that brothel in Vegas? Yes. Uh, a little souvenir. Thanks. Uh, <laughs> it's a little souvenir of my little wiener. That's right. Oh, Jimmy G is a hot commodity. People, I mean, you know, I don't want to brag. Uh, I'd bang him. No, well, I, you know, this happens. I, this is so embarrassing to say this on the podcast. <laughs> but sometimes I walk around and, you know, if... If you were to, some, sometimes I'll like walk around and, you know, I'll do something a little athletic. I'll be like, oh, just dodge or like a, maybe a cart or maybe someone's canvassing about Greenpeace. Like, oh, you know, get out of the way. And people are like, whoa, 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 is that? Ah, oh, I get mistaken for Jimmy G all the time. Oh, yeah, all yeah. All the time. I can see that. It really sucks. Yeah. Yeah. Because they'll tough, be like, tough hey. life you live. Yeah. And people are like, hey, it's Jimmy G. Is he sitting? <laughs> oh, he's standing. Ooh. <laughs> Ooh, little jimmy g yes they they think you're jimmy g until they look at you hear you or smell or notice you in any way okay listen okay like jimmy g is a very attractive man would i let him have sex with my girlfriend absolutely not because i'd be like he's fucking me <laughs> <laughs> i'm gonna be with jimmy g i'm gonna be i'm gonna be a center he's gonna be like hot 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 and be like where's the ball I'm like uh just keep your hands down there <laughs> Jimmy G is a good-looking guy. I love Jimmy G. I'd love to play catch Jimmy G and football. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> but here's the one, my one gripe with Jimmy G. Say what you will about his playing. He's a good-looking guy. Good-looking guy. Very good-looking guy. Have I said that before? Good-looking guy. <laughs> is that a name you want to hear in the bedroom? Jimmy? Mm. Think about that. No, sounds like a 1940s radio name. Yeah, like... 
Jimmy. Like, like you, you know you're hot when you can when you can make the name Jimmy look hot. Give it to me, Jimmy. Give yeah. it to me. That just sounds like fuck me, Jimmy. <laughs> Jimmy, put it in me, Jimmy. Harder, Jimmy. Jimmy. Jimmy, harder. Like, are you like having sex? Or are you calling your son from the fifties? Jimmy, where are you? Meat and potatoes are on the table. Oh, come on, Mom. We're just playing baseball. <laughs> <laughs> now stop it, Jimmy. <laughs> You're never going to make it to the big leagues. You'll see. <laughs> That's a name that you do not want to hear in the bedroom. No. No, no. It's an old name. Yeah. So if you were to, if I, if you were, if I, I bet our neighbor, my neighbors right now are thinking of me saying all this <laughs> Yes. To Jimmy. Give it to me, Jimmy. Give it to me, Jimmy. Jimmy, come on, Jimmy. Let's go. Let's have some sex. <laughs> Here, see. <laughs> it almost sounds like you know. Almost sounds like someone's trying to get some information out of a newsboy in the forties. Right. Come on, Jimmy. Give it to me. Give me the news. Give me the sauce, Jimmy. <laughs> <laughs> give it around my face. <laughs> That's a fun name to. Although any name with ends with an e sound always sounds always always is always going to sound like a, a young man. Yeah. Like Eddie is one too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like it is. Eddie, Eddie's a dying name. Mm. Do you know any other Eddies than me? Not famous ones. Think of it. Do you know any Eddies? Mm. Van, Van Halen? No, you don't know no. him. Oh, do I know? <laughs> do I know any other Eddies? No one knows an not, Eddie. Not really, no. No. I remember one time I was uh, in a park and I heard a woman go, Eddie, Eddie, Eddie. And I turn around. I'm like, here we go. It's got to be you. Another fan. Sure. Recognize me from Instagram Reels. <laughs> Probably listen to my podcast. I'm here in the flesh. She's shocked and called me over. And I waved. I'm like, hey. And then I look, and then a dog ran into her lap. Ah. Uh, she was calling her dog. I have a dog's name. Ah. Uh, oh, my really? name is relegated to dogs. And my name went from humans, mm -hmm. common Eddie name. Eddie was a common name, and then it kind of died. Eddie's a dying name. And your dog has a man's name. Yeah. My dog has a more manly name. My dog's name is Frank. Yeah. Frank, you trust. Yes. Frankie? Yeah, you okay? <laughs> um, but uh, Eddie's a dying name. Edmundo I could go by. Mm -hmm. I should go by Edmundo only. But that's still too debonair, too too swarthy. Right. I don't want to scare people off, especially white people. Mm -hmm. Anyhow, what do you got next? Well... People in uh, people in Wisconsin got a nice April Fool's uh, the other day. I thought this was real, but it's still it's still good, even though you realize it's an April Fool's joke. Mm. An article came out claiming that Wisconsin has opened the first ever cheese themed luxury spa. Ah! So the Dairy Farmers of Wisconsin, a nonprofit, created a fake menu of beauty and wellness treatments, including the cheddar face mask and the facial fondue. And the weirdest treatments on the menu were the salt brine bliss colonic. I don't know what the heck that would be. And Limburger moisturizing mist. Now, aside from April Fool's, uh, there is actually a place in Madison, Wisconsin, called the Edgewater Spa that does have real right, dairy-related right, right, right. treatments, including the Farmhouse Fresh Manny Petty, uh, which has a sweet cream scrub and sweet milk lotion that hydrate and softens your skin. Jimmy, put your barat on my chest, Jimmy. <laughs> <laughs> I want that half and half up my butt. <laughs> Jimmy, fill me with your half and half, Jimmy. <laughs> I want your curds and whey way up my ass. Oh, Jimmy. Put your matzo balls in me, Jimmy. <laughs> <laughs> That's not really dairy, but uh, uh, are you a big, you're a big cheese guy, right? Love cheese. Whoa. Big on cheese. You really snapped your head off. Love cheese. We talking about cheese now? Yeah. Are you a goat cheese guy? Are you a regular cheese guy? I don't guy? like goat cheese, but I no? do like... No? No, Why? Mm, the only, even slightly similar to that thing that I like is Manchego, which is a sheep cheese, and I, I, I like it a little bit. Do you ever like... Uh, I, I, this is a nice little, uh, little keto-friendly cheese hack. Uh, what you do is you grab some mozzarella cheese, and you uh, you put them in... Uh, do you have like a... Like a like a muffin baking sheet, or you know, yeah, like yeah. Little, yeah. So you just put some, uh, you put a little. Yeah, you make oil. little cheese crackers. Yes, and then you put like a pepperoni, and then you put a little like uh, some sauce on top, yes. and then you put some cheese on top, and it's like a cheese cracker. I like that, yeah, and I've made yeah, those yeah. before. Yeah, yeah. I was like, as I was making these, like these be perfect for my friend who avoids the vegetables at all costs. <laughs> <laughs> you don't, you eat vegetables. I do, but I love cheese. Uh, love it. American cheese is my favorite, but I also like cheddar and. Swiss and a variety of others. Swiss, I don't like because uh, you know, it, you know they're, they're with the whole, yeah, yeah, yeah. They're winning. 
<laughs> it's like give me, board. Give it's, me those holes back. Yeah, what, uh, what's in the holes? <laughs> <laughs> it feels like it's a uh, like a, you like know a how toy. There's, you know how you can get donuts, but you can also get donut holes? Yes. I want to buy Swiss cheese holes. Uh, Although, the, I think the curds is kind of what yeah. that is. Yeah. Wait a second. Donut holes are like the little... Spheres. <laughs> balls. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, but then Canada, they're called Timbits because Tim Horton's coffee has oh. the little balls. Yeah, yeah, okay. And then what do they have? They have them here in Dunkin' Donuts. They call them Dunkin' Bites or something. Oh, okay, yeah. Yeah, something like that. You don't know. You don't eat sugar. <laughs> I don't think you. I don't think but you the whole idea is hilarious because the people, the marketing behind this is, well, you've always wondered why your donut doesn't have something in the middle, so we're giving you that back. I it's know. Like, no, that's not how it's made. It. It's it's made as a loop. It's yes. not made by taking it, the hole out exactly. of a solid bun of donut. In their mind, <laughs> and they're, they're just appealing to the d- dumb American that's kind of like, well, that's how they make it, honey. They poke a hole in the middle, and they literally throw it away. <laughs> honey. Now, now we're getting it back. We got to go. We're winning. <laughs> We're getting the whole back. I want my whole donut. Yeah. You, they just, all they do is they put those holes in a bin and they ship them off to some country. No, no, no. You keep those holes right here in America. And you know what they never have is bagel holes. Where's the? Where's my bagel yeah, hole? Yeah, give me those Jewy bagel holes. <laughs> <laughs> Jews, give me your holes. I've said it once. I'll say it again, honey. I want my holes and I want them now. Yes. <laughs> I want my holes filled. Um, <laughs> so let me ask you a question about the good state of Wisconsin. Uh, have you ever been? Um, gosh, I, yes. You used to live in Chicago for a little bit. Yeah, so I did drive up there to, with some friend, or maybe my brother's uh, had friends there, yeah. What's so, the fascination with cheese? Oh, is it because of the dairy farms are so prevalent there? And yeah, so yeah. So they must have the, all the cheese there? It's so much cheese stuff. I don't know why, but also I've had, I've had cheese curds from Wisconsin. Cheese curds are nice. Are they, like, They're uh, great. In Canada, we have cheese curds on our, like, uh, on our poutine, uh, <laughs> poutine and gravy. But I will say this about the good state of Wisconsin, which I'd love to play one day. I would I would love to go on a cheese tour like a, like almost like a wine tasting tour they they must have them oh, where you go yeah. around and have like little I'm sure they do yeah I, cheese is I would so do good in a square with a toothpick mm. like when you go to like a like a Trader Joe's or mm. especially like a Costco and that lady is just you know that lady I'm talking about oh, she yeah. looks like she has like she has four kids and she, she's like making the you know she has a plate full of the little little toothpicks little samples and you go by and then. What I do is I, I switch clothing and I go back again and act like mm. I'm a different guy. Mm. <laughs> I have four outfits when I go to Costco. <laughs> <laughs> I just have a mustache and a hat. Hello, what yeah. are these? I haven't had these before. But I mean, one cube of cheese is like half a meal. This is just so rich, you know? Yeah, I, I mean, I love cheese in a, in a little cube. So that'd be cool. That'd be really cool. If I ever have a show in Wisconsin. We're going to have to do a cheese tour, a comedy cheese tour of Wisconsin. Yeah, that'd be fun. If I ever have a show in Wisconsin, that'd be that'd be that'd be something I'd have to I'd have to look up some sort of cheese kind of tasting thing. Comedy on state, if you're listening, bring us in. We'll do bring a cheese me in. show. Let me have your cheese. Let me have your cheese. Yeah. Uh, what time are we at? We're at 50, 50 minutes. Ah, oh, I had a good time. Did you have a good time? Yes. Yeah, Jeff. Let me know where they can find you. Find me on Twitter at Jeffrey Plitt, on Instagram at Jeff underscore Plitt, and on TikTok at What You Need to Know. Guys. Do me a favor. Give this podcast a ring review on Apple Podcasts slash iTunes. Also, subscribe to the notification bell on YouTube. Help the show grow. Leave a comment. Let me know what you think of the show. We'll talk to you next week with all new news stories. All right, everyone. Have a good week. We'll talk to you soon. Bye. Bye.